praise the Lord. Uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We come boldly, boldly to, the, to the throne of grace. Lord, speak through us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we hear your word, O Lord, allow your word to bear fruit in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers, O Lord. Glory be to your holy name. The, our theme for this year, 2018, as you already know, is my year of divine intervention. My year of divine intervention. The topic given to me to speak on today is divine intervention. Divine, I mean, when God intervenes. When God intervenes. As we all know that the Bible is the pillar of truth as the church. There's no situation that we are in that God can never intervene. As you use our faith to hold on to him in prayers and in thanksgiving. As the passage read to us in Exodus 14 verses 13 to 23, we all know the story when the Israelites were about to cross the Red Sea. Pharaoh was at the back and they are looking at the Red Sea in the front as if there was no help. But when God intervenes in your situation, there will be breakthrough. When God intervenes into your, into your situation, there will be deliverance. When God intervenes into your situation, there will be shout of joy. When God in, intervenes into your situation, you will be victorious in Jesus' name. There are some examples in the Bible that I've brought out to show us within the next 10, 15 minutes. As I've said, when God intervenes into your situation, number one, there are there will be shout of joy. Shout of joy. Number two, when God intervenes into your situation positively, you will be victorious. Number three, when God intervenes into your situation, there will be signs and wonders. Number four, when God intervenes into your situation, there will be deliverance. Like the Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. When God intervenes into your situation, it brings resurrection. When God intervenes into your situation, put, he puts an end to sorrow and weeping in our lives. When God intervenes into your situation, it will bring a new laughter. When God intervenes into your situation, there will be rejoicing and celebration in the name of Jesus. Rejoicing and celebration will not cease in our lives in the name of Jesus. It will cease in our homes in the name of Jesus. It will cease in our families in the name of Jesus. It will cease in our work in the name of Jesus. Let's take a um, shout of joy for an example. When, when shout of, of joy has come, you'll be happy. You'll be happy within yourself that you are delivered. Let's open our Bible to Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 17. Let somebody read for us quickly. Jeremiah 31, verse 17. And somebody, Jeremiah 31, verse 13. Jeremiah 31, 17. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Because we have a future. The Bible says God is going to give us an expected end. Because we have a future. So by now we should be shouting, we should be shouting, shout of joy. We should put all our trust in the Lord. Let somebody read Jeremiah 31 verse 13. Jeremiah 31 13. Thank you, Jesus. You hear the word of God. The word of God is powerful and it brings joy. It brings shouts of joy. It brings a resurrection, it brings deliverance and brings a new laughter, laughter unto us. Let somebody read Psalm 98 verse 1. When shout of joy comes within us. Psalm 98 verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You hear the word of God. The victorious hand of the Lord will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. 
the shout of joy will never cease in our house in Jesus' name. We will be victorious when God intervenes in our situations. There will be signs and wonders. Please let somebody read John 48. Verse, no, 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 I'm sorry. There will be signs and wonders. There will be deliverance and there will be freedom. Let's consider Psalm 126. Psalm 126. Psalm 126. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can see there must be deliverance when God intervenes. I will be free indeed. The Bible says if you are free, you are free indeed in the name of Jesus. Deliverance of God and the freedom of God will not cease in our houses in the name of Jesus. We have the cause to glorify His holy name every time in Jesus' name. We have the cause to glorify His holy name in our families, in our lives, in our works, in everything around about us in the name of Jesus. Then, number four, when God intervenes in our situation, He brings resurrection. Every dead thing in our lives will be resurrected in the name of Jesus. Can somebody read Nehemiah 5, verses 11 to 12? Nehemiah 5, 11 to 12. Jeremiah 5, 11 to 12. Mm-hmm. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. When God intervenes, there will be total restoration. What is it that we have lost, that we are looking for, that the Lord God Almighty cannot restore? If you put our, put our trust in the Lord, He will restore, He will resurrect all the dead things in our life in Jesus' name. Let's look, He will put an end to sorrow and weeping. He puts an end to sorrow and weeping when He intervenes. He puts an end to sorrow and weeping. Let's look at Jeremiah 31, verses 1 to 6. Jeremiah 31, 1 to 6. Jeremiah 31, 1 to 6. Quickly, because of our time. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can hear the words of God. When He put an end to sorrow and weeping in our lives, there will be rejoicing and celebration. The Bible passage right to us now said, You bring out your tambourine and you dance unto the Lord. We give thanksgiving unto him because he has done marvelous things in our lives. Marvelous things will not cease in our lives in the name of Jesus. Then, when, Lord, when the Lord intervenes into a situation, he brings a new laughter. laughter. You, will, you will sing a new song. You will laugh a new laugh. When he intervenes into a situation, quickly look into Proverbs 17, verse 22a. Proverbs 17, 22a. Proverbs seventeen twenty two a. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We all be joyful in the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus. There are lots of examples in the Bible. As the Bible is a pillar of truth, if you continue to say it, we won't leave here till the evening, and we are still going to stop the service and. 
um, do the Bible study and the DTM before we start the uh, second service. But I will quickly put our mind straight to the centurion in the Bible. We won't, we won't be able to open it because of the time. All of us know the story of the centurion, Balogwon, the centurion, and the story of the Kenyan woman in the Bible. They persisted in their faith by following Christ and continue, they continued praying until he answered them. So, and I want to tell you, what can we do that we can now receive the touch of God? That we can now receive the touch of God? That the Almighty Father will now intervene into our situations. What can we do? There are a lot of things that we can do. There are a lot of examples in the Bible. But I, quick, I will quickly take us into two or three examples in the Bible. Number one, for example, look at Daniel in the lion's den. He prayed fervently. He didn't know he was going, he was going to be put in the lion's den. He didn't know the, the, lion, the hungry lion won't, won't hit him, but he waited upon the Lord. He didn't allow the covenant relationship between, me and God, between him and God to be removed. He didn't allow anything to come between me and him and God. He finally waited upon the Lord. Number two, look at Hannah. He has been going to, the, to Shiloh with the family, the husband and the other woman. But he now went back alone to seek the face of God. Look at the centurion. Look at the Canaan woman. Look at the three Hebrews. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Look at them. They persisted in their faith. They didn't compromise. They waited upon the Lord. They showed the people that it's only God they have and nothing again. They didn't dilute him. They worshipped him in truth and in spirit. And they overcame. So, what can we do that we can receive the touch of God? That God can intervene into our situations. Number one, we must have faith. Fullness of faith. So we can enjoy the fullness of God. Look at Abraham. The promises of God came to pass. Even at his old age. He didn't go out of the promise of God. He kept on doing good. When the angels came to him, he didn't know they were angels. He attended to them very well. So that what he needed came to him. What God promised him came to pass. Our faith. Number two. We have to we must have total obedience unto God. Total obedience unto God. We don't have to move here or move here or move elsewhere. Go straight and look up unto him. Because the Bible says he is the author and finisher of our faith. So where is our, are we going? The Bible says, where can I go with that from your spirit? I have to wait upon you. It's only you I have. For example, when I'm praying, I say, I don't do any evil society. I don't do anything. I hold on to my Bible and look at heaven as if I'm seeing God. I said, it's only you. I tell God, if I have anything than you, don't answer my prayers. But if it's only you I have, answer my prayers that people will see that I'm really serving you. I always pray that way because I don't have any other way at all. Because I know it's the truth, the way, and the life. I say, if I have any other way, don't answer my prayers. It's not, it wasn't an easy thing to be a widow, widow at a tender age. But I didn't go anywhere. I'm using my life as, as, as an example now. If to say I've gone to a man that made you do for me, I say, ah, that man. Because at tender age, I didn't know I would be a widow. When I was called upon that my husband died, I said, no, it's not possible. How can I be? I'm serving you. I don't dilute you, God. And it didn't happen. Then I said, it's you I serve. And before you to have allowed this thing to happen, I know there are some things you want to do. And he did it excellently well. He did it. Singularly, I don't have power of my own. He empowered me. He intervened into my situation. He intervened into my family. He did excellently, excellently well. I tell him, I say, God, what have I done for you that you did this to me in return? He did well. In my children, he did well. In my family, he did well. In my work, he did well. I retired early last year. They still call me back that I have to be their consultant. I said no. I said government for the past 35 years. Let me rest and do my own. The director said no, I have to come. I said I can't be coming and be working up by 5, 5 a.m. and be coming to work by 6. But you know I'm bored. It's a different person entirely. I can't do it. But if you want to take me as a, as a consultant, I'll be coming be around 10. They said no. They said because what I did in the office. By the time I was, I was in the office, I didn't know what I was doing. But I stood firm that I didn't allow anything between me and God to crumble. 
I'm not perfect, but I stood firm. They are still on it. Sending people to me. Begging me to come. To the glory of God. What can we do again? To see the intervention of God. We must be in total obedience unto God. Psalm 118 verse 8 to 9. Psalm 118 verses 8 to 9. Verse 118 verses 8 to 9. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 8 to 9. Verses 8 to 9. These are the words of the Lord. You have to be in total obedience to God before He can intervene into your situation. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Then number three, you have to stop complaining. Because whenever He promised He will do anything, He will never fail. He will do it. Even He will do it above your expectation. Let's quickly look at Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. These are the words of the Lord. He is not a man that he can never that he can fail. He can never fail. If he promises anything, he will do it at his own time, at his own will, even more than your expectation. But we human beings, we ask him something today. Ah, Lord, do it today. He will do it at his own convenient time. He will do it at his own glory. He won't do it at your own. Because the Bible says his glory nobody can ever share with him. Why do you want to share his glory with him? Because the Bible has said it. As I've said earlier, the Bible is the pillar of truth as the church. We have to follow the teachings and the wordings in the Bible. You know, the Bible is a miraculous ending of the God's miracle. So we have to follow the Bible. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Then Psalm 23, we all know it. That the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want so whatever you want him to do for you, he will do it. Since you know he's your shepherd, that you, you can't lack anything with God, all things are possible. As I'm trying to finish this message because of our time, we have to stand on our feet. What is that thing are you trusting God for to do for you? That he has not done it. That you now think he's not going to do it. He will do it. Be it your children, be it your family, be it your work, be it your husband, which you are looking, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, everything is about you. Put your trust in the Lord. First and foremost, acknowledge Him that you are in His presence. Tell Him you don't have anybody except Him. Put your trust in Him that is your personal Savior. Put your trust in Him that you don't have anybody at all. Put yourself in the position of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Put yourself in the position of Hannah. Put yourself in the position of the centurion. Put yourself in the position of the woman with the issue of blood. Tell him he's the only one. Tell him nobody can never share his glory with him. Tell him he's your all in all. Tell him him. Acknowledge him. That is the only God that performs wonders. Tell him you believe in him. Tell him he has done all your heart desires at his own convenient time. So the glory can be returned back to him alone in Jesus' name. Continue to make your heart desire known unto him. Be telling him that he has answered your prayers.
thank him because you have seen the result of the prayers. Because the manifestation of the prayers will be shown to you. We thank him because he has answered our prayers. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We adore you. Because there's nobody like you. You know we have you. You are all in all. Glory be to your holy name. We return all the glory, honor, adoration back to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we have come to the we as we have come boldly to the throne of grace this morning, according to Hebrews chapter four, verse sixteen, we believe that all our heart desires has been met, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we have seen the result of our prayers in Jesus' name. As you are now closing this service, we know you are you are with us. You have been with us. We still continue to be with us. You have answered our prayers, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Next week when you come around at this time. Uh, to worship you, Lord. We have the cause to glorify your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We have heard your word, O oh Lord. And we thank you because your word has bear fruits in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray.